Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you to the organizers. Uh, so yes, I'd like to tell you today about uh, some patient single cell imaging and how we think it might be helpful in neurodegenerative disease. So there's a huge, enormous, and growing challenge uh, of neurodegenerative disease that we're currently facing. At the moment, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases are the sixth leading uh, killer in the United States, but it's going to get a lot worse, predictably, and it's going to get worse soon. And that's because the number one risk factor for neurodegenerative disease is aging. And as this graph shows, there's this group of people called baby boomers that are just about hitting the prime uh, time in life when Alzheimer's disease hits. And so the prediction is that this is going to create a wave, maybe a tsunami, of neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And that, in turn, is going to cause a huge increase in medical and social costs. Some estimates uh, put it at 40 trillion over the next uh, 40, 10 trillion, I'm sorry, over the next 40 years, and an increase of between 400 and 600 percent in Medicare and Medicaid costs in the next decade or two. And it's not just a U.S. problem. Uh, there are populations in Europe and Asia that are actually grayer than us. In fact, uh, by 2040, China is expected to have more people with dementia than the rest of the developed world combined. And I'm sorry to say that in 2012, we still don't have a single disease-modifying therapy for neurodegenerative disease. So we're about to get hit with this wave, and we don't have much to offer. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, why don't we have therapies yet? There are obstacles. And one of them is really trying to understand the cause of these diseases. Why do people get Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease? So, it's been investigated pretty carefully, and in only a few rare cases can we identify single gene mutations that are responsible for these disorders. So the prevailing view right now is that these are caused by a constellation of uh, genes and perhaps interaction with the environment uh, to produce these diseases. And it raises a fundamental question. Is Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease one disease or many? And I think the answer to that question really has huge implications for how we do drug development in this area, ultimately how we diagnose the disease, and how we develop therapies. It's my personal view that these diseases are actually multiple diseases, and that, uh, like Mark Hellestein just uh, spoke, we're going to be talking about Alzheimer's disease type 3 or Parkinson's disease type 8 uh, someday. And so I think what we really need to do is think about developing personalized medicine approaches to this problem so that we can make headway. One of the uh, recent advances, I think, that's a piece of the puzzle has been a new technology called induced pluripotent stem cells. This was a breakthrough that was developed by a colleague of mine at the Gladstone Institute, Shinya Yamanaka. The basic idea is that we can take a skin sample. Just beneath the skin here, there are live cells that we can collect and culture in the laboratory. And then we can add a series of genetic factors to them to reprogram them from these differentiated fibroblasts to these cells that we call induced pluripotent stem cells. And these are remarkable cells because once they're generated, we can then turn them into other differentiated cell types, like liver cells or pancreas cells, cardiomyocytes, heart cells, and my favorite, neurons even the same types of neurons that are affected in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. And one of the features of these dis, uh, cells is that they have exactly the same genetic makeup of the patient from which they came. So there's a lot of excitement about the applications of these uh, cells to medicine. Uh, one of the first thoughts that occurred to a lot of people is that maybe they can be used to generate replacement parts that might be lost during disease. And so there's a lot of focus on making cell types like pancreatic beta cells, heart cells, neurons, and thinking about ways that we might be able to transplant them into people who have disease uh, to see if we can restore function. Another idea is that these uh, cells may be uh, innovative, useful vehicles for drug discovery. And so that's an area uh, that's being focused on. One thing that we're working on and that we've actually established in our laboratory has really been to try to develop these as tools for drug discovery. And the issue here is that uh, the field of neurodegenerative disease has relied heavily on using mouse models of disease, as you heard earlier, uh, to do a lot of the preclinical development before we go into clinical trials. 
But I also told you that so far every clinical trial has failed uh, in these major uh, diseases. And so one concern is that maybe mice and people are more different than we thought. And, uh, and maybe having a human neuron model of these diseases could be a really useful tool for sorting out what uh, things might actually be uh, useful in clinical trials. But there are challenges to working with iPS cells. The moment they're still pretty difficult and expensive to grow, uh, they're also heterogeneous. That is to say, once you have the iPS cell and you're trying to make specific cell types, uh, exactly the efficiency with which you can make the specific cells varies quite a bit depending on the cell you want to make. And so one of the things that we have been uh, trying to develop is a way to do high throughput automated single cell analysis to get at some of the functional uh, features of these cells. And this is to complement work that uh, David Gallus mentioned that he and I are collaborating on to do whole genome sequencing on these cells to get the genetic picture. But we want to complement that with a real functional analysis of these cells. So the system that we invented a few years ago, we've nicknamed a robotic microscope. This is a second generation version, and we're building a third now, third generation system. And the distinguishing feature of this system, compared with other high throughput systems, is that we can truly do clinical trials in a dish. We literally use the same math uh, that we use for clinical trials. And that's because this microscope treats each cell as a patient. And that's because as we built the system and as we wrote the software, we enabled the microscope to go back and to be able to find each individual neuron and to follow it over its lifetime or you know, the length of the clinical trial, if you will. Uh, the net effect has been that this is about 100 to 1,000 fold more sensitive than existing or commercially available high throughput uh, screening technologies. So much so that it's possible now for us to be able to predict the performance of a population of cells from just measuring responses in eight cells per well. And so this has really made it possible to use more physiologically relevant cells that are otherwise pretty difficult to grow, like iPS cells or primary neurons. And the other point is that we've been able to adapt the system to simultaneously measure multiple functions uh, in live cells at once. So this is a series of pictures that get generated uh, by the microscope of one small part of a microscope field. And here are three neurons. We can think about them as patients. The microscope will go and find them, assign each cell a unique identifier, like a social security number, and in effect create a medical record that then uh, fluorescence data get added to as the cell gets followed over time until either it dies or the experiment's ended. We can also introduce more than one probe in the same cell so we can simultaneously uh, collect information uh, on multiple functions at once. And using math, uh, we can create basically systems understandings, quantitative, predictive, dynamic models of these interacting pathways over time and tell you to what extent a perturbation in any one pathway predicts fate. And by extension, whether a therapeutic that we add to those cells can alter that fate. Uh, the system, as I said, has been so sensitive and powerful that it's enabled us to make human neuron models of other neurodegenerative diseases, like Huntington's disease and ALS, uh, in which there's a known genetic cause. And that, in turn, has led to the discovery of a series of cellular functions uh, in these cells that seem to be especially important for determining the risk of that cell for neurodegeneration. And so the key idea in this talk is that we would now like to take that information and that uh, knowledge to apply it to sporadic diseases like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease where we don't know the genetic cause or where there may not be a, well, almost certainly is not a single genetic cause. And that is to say to, to ha use these tailored cell functions to be able to create effectively a physical exam for the cell that can help us with stratification. So the idea would be to take our iPS cell, turn it into a neuron that's relevant for that disease, and then probe it with our robotic microscope system to be able to observe its health, to look at whether it exhibits symptoms of neurodegeneration that we can track, and to be able to stimulate it and see how it responds. And so with a system like that, we could envision being able to take uh, skin samples from patients who've just been given a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, make iPS cells in a couple weeks in the laboratory, use this microscope to do an exam, and to be able to stratify or classify that patient uh, with a particular subtype of that disorder. 
And I think that'll be immediately useful for families because these disorders can have fairly variable symptoms. I suspect in part because, again, it's a hetero probably a heterogeneous disease. But I think what I'm really hopeful about is that this will lay the foundation for doing more successful clinical trials. And you've heard a lot about this this morning. But the issue for us is that when we try to do a clinical trial in Alzheimer's disease, we enroll people based on their clinical syndrome of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, but it may be the case that the drug we have only works on a subset of those patients, but we don't know who they are. And so any clinical trial constructed that way is doomed to failure, even though the drug itself probably could work. So the issue for us is can we use this technology to identify the subpopulation of patients who would benefit from the drug that we're using, and in fact use the iPS cells themselves as a drug discovery platform. So we really unite our preclinical drug discovery platform with what will happen in our clinical trial to see if we can get that link tighter and uh, have more predictable results. If we can, then the idea is that the patient would be screened with this technology entered into a targeted clinical trial based on the performance of their cells. And we think if we can do that, that will in turn reduce the risk of drug development, probably increase the chance that we'll have a successful clinical trial. And in return, we imagine that would lead to a higher return on investment and hopefully a virtuous cycle where uh, we'd get increased investment in this uh, neurodegenerative disease space, which until now has really been viewed as pretty risky. And of course, the bottom line is that when that cycle works, it's going to produce therapies that actually work and that are useful for people. And we'll have a platform ready to be able to take our patients who've got their diagnosis and to be able to uh, give them a correct therapy. So just to finish, uh, there are really three points from the talk today. I think that there are some promising new technologies uh, that, I th that may lead uh, the way to a personalized medicine approach to neurodegenerative disease. One of these is induced pluripotent stem cells, this idea that we can take a skin sample from a patient with a clinical diagnosis, turn it into a stem cell, and then turn it into the cell types like neurons that are relevant for the diseases we want to study, and to use these as tools for drug discovery and maybe find uh, therapies that are going to be more relevant and actually more successful in clinical trial. The second is this new uh, single-cell high-throughput automated imaging system, robotic microscopy, that allows us to truly do clinical trials in a dish by treating each cell as a patient and benefiting from tremendous uh, increase in sensitivity and the ability to create these systems understandings of neurodegeneration, which I think will lead to the discovery of both pathogenic responses as well as coping responses by cells, both of which might be targeted therapeutically. And then finally, the combination of these two technologies to create a personalized medicine platform to develop new drugs and diagnosis that will hopefully treat patients and help uh, with these dreadful diseases. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.